Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Men in Black International. And I wasn't super excited about this film when they announced it. I thought, okay, it has Chris Hemsworth in it, it has Tessa Thompson in it, that could be interesting. But them losing Barry Sonnenfeld and him not doing this film and bringing in a director, F. Gary Gray, who did Straight Outta Compton and Fast and Furious, I'm kind, I was sitting there kind of not quite sure what to expect from this film. Is this really going to feel like a Men in Black film in this same universe, or is this going to be a whole new thing? And honestly, when it really comes down to it, it kind of falls somewhere in between, and honestly, pretty forgettable. This film doesn't have anything particularly special about it that really makes it stand out. The story has some interesting twists and turns to it, but overall, it's like, Nothing really popped out about it. The characters, they, like, Tessa Thompson was really the shining light in this film. She did a solid job of really trying to bring something to this film, an earnestness and a passion to it. Chris Hemsworth honestly kind of felt like, hey, I'm Chris Hemsworth and I'm just doing my thing. And that was it. And it felt like he was kind of just there, being himself, which... That's enough charisma to bring to the table, but nothing really special. Camille Nanjiani actually is one of the big standouts from this film for me, and his character, Pawnee, was great. I loved him, and he subverted the expectation of those little characters that like pop up, and they're supposed to be cute. Are they going to be annoying? Do they even do anything? Why are they here? He earns his right to be in this film, and he'll surprise you, and I appreciated that. Liam Neeson is Liam Neeson does a really solid job. Emma Thompson is great in the little bit that she's actually in the film. But from the story perspective, it feels like some of the foreshadowing to potential twists were a little on the nose, really, really hinted at, almost to the point where they almost straight up told you, like, hey, something's wrong here, kind of thing. And I don't know, this film from a tonal perspective and an atmosphere, it tries to be the originals. It has the same music, which the music works. I really enjoy the music from the Men in Black films. But the thing is, a lot of the sequences start turning into feeling more like Fast and Furious kind of tone. Which the thing is, the original trilogy of Men in Black films aren't outright just action films. They are quirky science fiction films, with some action sequences thrown in. This kind of feels like it's leaning more like, hey, we're an action movie, we're cool. But it really doesn't sell it. And F. Gary Gray doesn't really bring anything special to this film. And honestly, by the end, it's pretty forgettable. It, zip, like, it didn't feel like it dragged, it got places. And that's about it, honestly. This felt like really inconsequential kind of film. I heard recently there's a lot of information coming out about all the turmoil behind this was supposed to be a completely different movie. And honestly, wish it was a different movie. Because kind of forget about it. Pretty quickly. And that's disappointing because Men in Black has been better than that. This is alright. If you're just looking for just like a fun, turn your brain off kind of goofy film, then go see Men in Black International. If you're hoping for the same kind of quirk and charm as the original trilogy, then that doesn't really hit that. And this definitely isn't the first one. And I actually really love the third one. I know a lot of people have some problems with it. This definitely is down there with the second one, and probably even lower. And that's honestly how I feel about this film. Comment. Let me know what you think about Men in Black International. Let's talk some movies. And thank you, as always, for supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.